Did you know that in drag racing, the front suspension is probably more important than the rear suspension? That's because the front end's job is to transfer weight to the rear suspension where it can drive the car forward. We've seen the gassers of the 60s and the Southeast Gassers Association. We've also seen the long travel suspension cars like Beater Bomb. But the thing is that both of these suspensions are pretty much meant to do the same kind of thing in two entirely different ways. Transfer weight from the front of the car to the back of the car. If you're new to drag racing, the front suspension is where you can see a lot of gains in consistency and performance on track, as well as you can actually actualize those childhood dreams of doing wheelies. I know I had that dream and now I've got it. So for the average sportsman level bracket racer, I'm going to assume that you've made some updates to the rear suspension that may include, you know, tubular upper and lower control arms on these G-body cars, the old school slapper bars, or maybe even Caltracks, and you're probably running a slick or a radial. So for the intent of this video, I'm going to assume that you're probably not seeing too much crazy wheel spin off the line, but you're looking to improve the consistency of your car and how it acts on the track. And even if you are getting a little bit of wheel spin, this is probably one of those things that can improve that so that way you don't have to go too crazy on the back half of the car. So now that we've talked about what the job of the front suspension is, there's really two aspects that we have to think about. How the rise or how much suspension travel that we have, and that's oftentimes limited by the factory stuff. And we also need to think about the freedom of the front suspension that allows it to articulate. The freedom is allowing it to move through its range smoothly. On a factory style front suspension like my El Camino, we're kind of limited by what the factory gave us in terms of upper and lower control arm arrangement, spring pockets, those kinds of things. And there's a couple of small things that you can do to make a difference, like uh, removing the bump stops on the upper control arm. And there's also the ball joint spacer that's been done off and on for a lot of years that has questionable results in terms of front end ball joint uh, binding issues and such, but there's little things that can be done to get a little bit more travel out of the front suspension. This is at max travel right now, and uh, from its ride height, I pick up about four inches from normal ride height to top down. Now for the next one, which I think is a lot more fun, is the freedom or the ability of your suspension to articulate. No, I'm not gonna turn this thing into a rock crawler, but allowing our suspension to do its job and move freely. Things that go into that are the suspension bushings themselves. Uh, if you're running a car, sportsman, you're just getting started in this, sometimes if your car has got those original uh, crusty front bushings, those are things that you can actually pick up a lot of consistency because your suspension is allowed to articulate smoothly through its entire range. Now there's a lot of things that you can do here. Uh, you can buy loaded upper and lower control arms, tubular that accommodate different spring packages, coilovers, you name it. Uh, TRZ, uh, Trick Chassis, there's a whole bunch of manufacturers that you can get those front end components for, BMR, UMI, I mean, we could go on and on for a long time. The other and perhaps more budget friendly option is replacing just the bushings in your original control arms with something more performance friendly. There's polygraphite, there's polyurethane, both of those have sticky problems, but there's one that I'm particularly fond of and it's Global West. Global West offers a Della Loom bushing that presses into the original style control arm and allows unparalleled slip to uh, occur so that way the suspension is allowed to articulate around its points exactly like it's supposed to. For a budget application, the Global West are by far my favorite. You have a hard aluminum bushing with a Delrin center section and a steel uh, shaft or spacer that goes in there so that way everything is able to move freely. These are greased so that way the friction is greatly reduced and they flat out work. I didn't know this at the time I rebuilt the front suspension, but uh, this was gonna be something that was gonna be so important to the car on the track. Much harder to see, but I do have them on the lower control arms too. They're peeking out there inside the stamp steel control arm. And I also want to address one misconception about having a bushing that doesn't really have any give in the bushing. Uh, I was at a car show to cruise in with this car and someone said, oh, you must like a harsh front suspension. I says, absolutely not. This thing is not harsh because the suspension is allowed to articulate and do its job. These bushings are not harsh to drive on the street. They're actually very smooth. Okay, so with the front suspension moving freely, let's talk about transferring the weight. This comes in the form of the spring. Yes, the lowly coil spring 
is wildly important in this uh, instance. Keep in mind, this car is not optimized in that respect. I have a factory heavy duty spring, but the choice of the spring largely comes down to uh, front end weight, ride height, and a couple of different variables. My best suggestion is to get a hold of a spring manufacturer. Uh, Moroso offers the trick springs. Uh, you need an accurate front end weight, total vehicle weight, you have a couple of variables that you need to solve for before you ultimately pick a spring. Now, it does get easy. Since I'm a G-Body guy, I can speak to it effectively on the G-Bodies. Uh, as an example, as you start getting uh, lower in the models, lower in the option packages, uh, the front end suspensions often got lighter, meaning it took less spring to hold the front end up, the front suspension up to its desired ride height. Uh, for the uh, G bodies, the V6 non air conditioning Malibu typically represents the lowest possible front end weight. And this is something when you start taking weight off the nose, you need to be aware of. Uh, when I took the air conditioning, a whole bunch of things out of this car, aluminum heads, my front end actually came up a little bit. Uh, those factory, factory style heavy duty springs have been in there from when I rebuilt the suspension just after I bought the car and got my driver's license. They are not ideal for this case. I really should put some V6 Malibu springs in here and it would probably improve the performance a little bit. So part of the reason you want a lighter front spring, you know, for the weight of your car, as an example, is that it has more stored energy. More travel equates to more stored energy and it allows for more effective weight transfer to move the weight to the rear suspension where it can be applied to the rear tires and help keep the rear tire planted. So we have a suspension that now moves, transfers weight with the springs. Now we need to be able to dampen or control that weight transfer and those forces. That comes in the way of shock absorbers. You've heard race cars talk about uh, double adjustable shocks or single adjustable shocks. What that means is that there is adjustability. Single adjustable shocks, you're allowed to control the extension or rebound of the shock. Double adjustable shocks, you're allowed, you're able to control the extension as well as the uh, compression of the shock. That does a couple of nice things. It allows you to set the shocks up so that way it can come up fast, get the weight transfer there, and settle down slowly to essentially keep as much weight on the rear suspension as possible to keep the tires planted. Now, this car, I do have double adjustable shocks on the front of it. I did used to run it at uh, full loose so that we would come up fast and it was about halfway, maybe a little bit tighter than halfway on the compression so that way it would settle down more gradually through the length of the track. But uh, since I've made a couple of changes to the rear suspension, the car is now acting different and I had to tighten up the rebound a little bit so that way it wasn't extending quite as quick. And I'll talk more about why I had to do that in just a minute. Tuning of the front shocks are done by uh, two knobs that are located on the sides of the body of the shock. Uh, on this car or the stock style front control arm, I have to turn the wheel all the way one direction, reach in with a screwdriver, and then make the changes I need. And if I want to adjust the other setting, I have to rotate the tire the other way and reach in and do the same dance just on the other side. It's not ideal, but for a budget-friendly application, it does work, and it does work very well. So now I get to some fun suspension tuning theory. Tuning the front suspension in terms of uh, dampening and travel, this is where we start to get to a point where we can have a car that actualizes those childhood dreams of does wheelies or stays very well planted and composed on the track. Basically, unfun doesn't do wheelies. Wheelies, right? Okay. So let's get to that. So for a car to do wheelies, you have to have you know sufficient traction at the back, sufficient power to be able to lift, and a suspension that articulates smooth enough to be able to transfer the weight to the back. This is a mid to high 12 second car, and I am just getting to the point where everything is working and I'm getting wheelies, like seriously, wheelies, not much. But the point is, is that uh, when you're tuning the extension, if it's loose, and it needs to be tightened up a little bit to prevent wheelies, like if you're getting monster wheelies, you're gonna have to tighten down the extension as well as possibly limit the overall travel of the front suspension to reduce the amount of weight that is getting transferred to the back end and being allowed to rotate, uh, you know, basically upwards around 
the pivot point that is the rear suspension axle center line. So the theory is, is that as you tighten it up, it's slower to transfer the weight and doesn't hit the top and it isn't allowed to keep going in the vertical direction. So this is important because uh, when I made that change to the rear suspension, uh, the car was now reacting a little bit different and it was now doing wheelies, uh, thanks to a friend of mine who pointed that out and I really appreciate it. But what that means is I had to do something to the front end because now the car was reacting too quickly. I was getting a lot of red lights because instead of driving through the beams, it was being yanked vertically out of the beams. The distance was shorter to come out of the beams vertically, so I was getting more red lights. Going forward was far more controlled. Uh, I tightened up the extension, two clicks, both sides, and the car was able to drive forward through the beams and about five-ish feet out, the front end was coming up to full extension, hitting the top and getting a little bit of light under the front tires. And that was five or six feet out. So that was becoming a far more uh, useful on the track suspension, useful from the standpoint of it's working with me, I'm working with it, I'm able to keep it green to be able to keep going rounds. So the last thing to talk about to help your car, especially if you're just starting out, become a better car on the track is the front sway bar. Now there's a lot of conjecture here. Should you remove the front sway bar? My personal feeling is if it's gonna be a dedicated track car and you're trailing it to the track, you're aware of the uh, handling pitfalls that come with not having a uh, sway bar on the front, those are things that you'll have to make that judgment call. Now, as the chassis twists, because let's face it, these cars aren't exactly that rigid in the first place, let me put this sway bar down. back. So as the front end rises, there's a little bit of chassis twist and the sway bar actually uh, resists that twist and, a lot, and the suspension isn't allowed to move quite as free as it would as if it wasn't there. So removing the front sway bar on a purpose or purpose built car, a dedicated car, or you're very aware of the handling that it's going to have, uh, disclaimer, it's awful. <laughs> drag cars do not handle well. Uh, if you're okay with that, remove the front sway bar and it's likely to be more consistent on the track. So you can see now more than ever that this front suspension is wildly important for a drag car. And it can also be that fine line between realizing that childhood dream of doing wheelies or having a very well composed car on the track. I want to do wheelies, but I want to do wheelies on my terms in a way that uh, works for me. So I've toned it down a hair. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Let's get out to the garage and go build some race cars.